Hi, I'm Apostle Tommy Bell. I'm First Lady Tabitha Bell. And this is Touching the World Ministries. I played for the Amsterdam Admirals. And when I first made the team, I was truly elated, Minister Bender. I was truly elated. And I was so excited that I bought myself a plane ticket to come back to the United States. So when I bought myself a plane ticket, I'm in Amsterdam, and everybody know in Amsterdam, one thing, they call it Sin City. Because everything over there is legal. There ain't nothing illegal in Amsterdam. So did I thought. So I had bought some more clothes because the temperature in Europe and the temperature in Mississippi don't correlate with one another. Mm -hmm. So while in the airport, I had to dress down for where I was going. So in other words, I had to buy some more luggage and I bought some more luggage, but in, 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 in the airport, they have everything so restricted, so I didn't have nothing to clip the little clips with, so I had to go buy a pocket knife. I bought a pocket knife, to, so I can put my clothes in so I can get ready to come back into the States. And 
I put the pocket knife into my pocket. And I'm getting ready to go, you know, coming into like the airport. I'm getting ready to go into the airport. And I got to the desk. Nothing was said. I got past the, the desk, getting ready to put my luggage in. And I walked through the tunnel and I started beeping. Because I forgot that I had the knife on me. I was good long as I was in the parking lot. I was good as long as I was on the counter. But when I got ready for takeoff, all hell broke loose. I want to speak to some of you right now because some of you got something on you and the enemy is the enemy is trying to stop you before you get in the air because he knows that once you get in the air, ain't nothing he can do with you. Because when you get ready for takeoff, the enemy don't want you to get up off the ground. Oh God, oh God. And so, if I had never had the knife on me, the enemy couldn't have nothing to say. I submit to you this morning that the enemy understands that some of you got something on you and in you that he has to stop before you get into the air. Yeah. Oh God, look at your name and say, are you ready for takeoff? Are you ready for takeoff? John chapter number 11, we see here that we have Jesus and his disciples. And like we've explained before, that John is not a synoptic gospel. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic in his writings. Synoptic means similar, but John is totally different than all the other gospels because Jesus gave information to John that he did not give other disciples. Why is that, so many people ask? Because John had a closer relationship. If you look at the relationship that Jesus had with John, the only disciple that was able to lay upon Jesus' breast was John. John is the one that died an ordinary death. All the other apostles, they died horrific death. But John died of natural causes. John had so much revelation that he wrote the book of Revelation because he understand the heart of God. And so here when you see John chapter number 11, God gives him some insight that he did not give of a disciple. I wondered why here that I often look at John and I look at Lazarus and every time I read it, I get a little bit more revelation about who Jesus is. Right. Oh God, oh God. And so when I look at it here, now in this morning when we were talking about the various things of dying, automatically my mind went back to Lazarus. Mm. We see here that we already know that Jesus loved Lazarus and he loved Mary and Martha. But in loving them, they still went through calamities. Somebody said calamities. Calamity. It, 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 it appears to me in the 21st century church that we submit ourselves and say if God loves us, that means that we will have no woe that we will have no heartache and that we will have no pain. But here I understand now when we were talking about death, my mind went past my own falls and failures this week and went past some other people that I lost and I thought about the passion of the Christ. And in my mind, the Holy Ghost began to remind me, Sister Willie, that the passion, if you look it up in the epidemiological state, that the passion, if you look it up from this root word, Oh God. So in the passion, the passion of the Christ really means the suffering of the Christ. Oh God. So you cannot really understand it until you have some suffering. Oh God. Oh God. And so now if you look, even the Bible says that Jesus himself learned obedience through the things he suffered. Oh God. I'm going somewhere with it. Do you mean to tell me that Suffer, he has a purpose in my pain. Oh God. There's a 
purpose. There's a purpose. There's a purpose. So I want to talk to a few of you this morning that you ain't suffering, that you ain't going through all this hell for nothing. All this crime that you're experiencing, it's not for nothing. Because the Bible says, the Apostle Paul said, that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Oh God, oh God, oh God. See, what the enemy wants you to believe that what you're going through, you're going through for nothing. But what my job is today is to explain to you, you ain't going through what you're going through for nothing at all. Oh God, I got a, I got a word for you. Just hang on in there for a second. So now we see that somebody that Jesus loves is sick. And if you peruse the scriptures, if you read the scriptures, you will never hear Lazarus, this Lazarus' name, until he dies. You mean to tell me now that God, the only time God mentions Lazarus' name is when he didn't die? But you love me. Right. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm going to wait somewhere with it. So you mean to tell me that God, God loves Oh God. See, I'm going to submit to you, sometimes, 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 God don't check on babies. Oh God. Because some people, he understands the purpose and the plan and the anointing and the call upon their life, and he's not going to come running for them for every little thing. Oh God, oh God. So some of us are crying, and some of us are wailing, and God said, are you not mature enough yet to help me? church is real good at getting a group of people together and having a pity party. You know, we, 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 we're real good in that and we're real good in feeling sorry for ourselves and we're real good in feeling the woe is me attitude. But the Bible, the Bible said that he does not put more on us than we able to bear. How many of y'all really believe that? Yeah, yeah. How many of y'all really believe that? I'm talking about for real, for real. If you believe it, praise your hand. So now we have to understand that a lot of us have went through hell in high water. And sometimes we question God in our mind, why am I going through this? So now let's look at the text. Pastor Curse, because Lazarus did not die for the sake of Lazarus. The Bible says that Lazarus died for the sake of the disciples. Right. Oh God, oh God. Sometimes you're going through things in your life not because of you, it's because of for somebody else. Oh God. Look at your neighbor for the first time and give them a high five. Say, this is bigger than you. Oh, that's the wrong neighbor. They still ain't woke up yet. Oh, you need to get that other neighbor and say, neighbor, this is bigger than you. And so Lazarus says, and then the Bible says, Jesus said plainly uh, to the disciple, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad. Oh God, oh God. For their sake, Jesus is glad. And so now Jesus has a purpose and a plan for the death of Lazarus. Mm. And so now, glory to God, we see that Lazarus has died, and, and we already know that Jesus has the purpose to wait for four days. Somebody said four days. Four days. We already know why he had to wait for four days because the, the Jewish custom was is that it had to, you had to be dead four days and be three days. A fourth day says that you were dead for real. If you raised in three days, in three days, that means the spirit was still hovering around the body. So Jesus had to let Jesus, Lazarus be dead. Oh God. Some of us in here, glory to God, you're going through hell right now. But Jesus had to wait till you get to a position where nobody else can get their credit but him because he understands if somebody else helped you out right now, they'll get the glory. But God said, I'm going to put you in a position where it looks like you ain't going to make it out so I can get all the glory 
day what you come out of this. But you can understand, you got to move some stuff out the way in order to be prepared for takeoff. Slap your neighbor for the second time. Say, clear the wrong way. talk to you for a little wow. while longer because you understand now that Lazarus and his home is, glory to God, is dying. But if you read the scriptures as I have, I've never seen Lazarus pray one prayer. I've never seen Lazarus raise his hand and worship one time. But I do see Mary and Martha in position. Oh God. Sometimes, glory to God, God will move who you connected to. Oh Shout glory to God because some people are about to thank you in a few minutes. They don't know Jesus, what you do. Oh God, they ain't never praised God before, but you have. Glory to God, they ain't never been into the house of God, but you have. Oh God, to which you don't understand. God is hooking you up and hooking the people up around you because of who connected to you. Oh God. with God. But Lazarus was not able to praise God, nor he was he able to pray. But he was connected. Oh God, look at your neighbor and say he was connected. He was Woo, God, let me tell you right now, we're going to give you five signs you ready for takeoff. Oh God, y'all ready to write the five signs down. Glory to God. So now we understand that you need to be connected. Number one, you need to be connected to the right source. Oh God. Because sometimes we waste time dealing with the wrong source. Let me give you an example. When I used to get in trouble, I used to go run to a whiskey bottle. Wrong source. When I used to get in trouble, I used to go do other stuff. Wrong source. I know all of y'all been saying that y'all ain't never tried to do nothing else. I'm just talking about to the real people. about of the conscious to switch to switch the source so you mean to tell me I if, if, if I wouldn't get no power I wouldn't get no power right there right. but I'm still connected let me explain it to you just imagine that it's plugged in and, and I'm plugged in expecting to get something that I'm not getting. Some of you connected with people or connected with things expecting to get something that you're not getting. Oh God. But I feel God this morning is giving you the chance to disconnect. But 
I still got a little bit more work to do because some people, I, I, I just heard the Lord, some people want to be celebrated before time. Some of us want to be celebrated before time. God waits to the right time to celebrate you. The body of Christ has an infection that needs to be dealt with and it's called jealousy. Teach, my God. Called jealousy. Because you have to understand that jealousy will cause you not to pray for your brother or your sister or praise God for when something happens. Right. To them. Oh God. See when 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 a mature saint gets into a place they understand that I can praise God for you because I know if he blesses you, oh God, oh God, the second God that blesses you, oh God, I'll bless me too. So I can praise God for you because I understand I can wait, oh God, because I'm mature enough to know that he's blessing you, that I'm next, oh God.
switch my attention now to clause B of verse 15. Clause A of verse 15. Oh, clause B. And it says, clause B, it says, I'm going to read the whole phrase of verse 15. It says, and for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there. So that you may believe. But let's go get it. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. See, you just missed it. You just missed it. You just missed it. Oh God. You don't understand. Oh God. I did this for you. But let's go get it. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. And some people, glory to God, that's missing this morning. But God is putting it on it. On your life. So let's go get it. Oh God, you see it right now. Oh God, we got you all through this hell. So you can believe that God is better enough. Let's go get it. Oh God, you can do an observation. You can look at the rows and see who's not here. Let's go get it. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Shut the neighbor. Oh, God. Last 
intercessors. You can't be a messy intercessor. Said my word should not return unto me void. Uh-huh. 
that means empty. He said, if I sit out, that's going to leave with something, I'm going to come back. It's going to come back with something. Oh, God. Oh, God. So every time the word of God leaves, it's, it's, it's leaving with something, but it's got to come back with something. Oh God, oh God, I don't need, I don't need an ovation for them. Uh, so, so now, so now, Jesus, he told the disciples that it's going to rise. So the enemy that stuff and let the word went out. Yeah. Oh, y'all just missed it. Y'all just missed it. Because we're going to try to stop Jesus from saying that he was going to live. He was going to live. But see, right now, Jalazarus had to get up because Jesus said he was going to get up. But let me make a real
second place trophy looks, you still lost. Well, I had five others behind me. You still lost. Because somebody was first. With God, you don't never lose. Because now people have thought that Jesus is lost, thought oh, Lazarus was dead. So now, if you scroll on over to chapter number 12, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh God, you will see, I'm not going to read it, but you will see now the disciples and Lazarus and Jesus all together. Oh God. But now, the Pharisees and Sadducees uh -huh. see something they didn't want to see. Uh -huh. Oh, God. They didn't see something that was raised from the dead. Uh -huh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, you just got to be You're going to get something here. I want you to picture. They said that Jesus wasn't God. Mm. Oh, God. Now, Jesus is saying, I am God. I am. Oh, God. And he said, I'm going to show you about what? Not they say, but I'm going to give you evidence. Amen. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. In this season, I just heard the Holy Ghost say he's going to give your praise evidence. Oh, God. So many times you come to church, you praise God, but you don't have no evidence. Oh, God. But see, you're going to give some evidence to your praise. Oh, God. Have you noticed 
Have you noticed something in the text? Oh God, we're going back to Genesis 1. At this point, if you read, if you read Pastor Kirsch, if you read it, if you read it, Brother Hannah, if you read it, Jesus had just got through laying hands on 3,000, 5,000. And then and that the Forest Commission would tell you over 10,000. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Mm -hmm. He touched them. Mm -hmm. Oh, because they didn't have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. oh, oh God. He had to touch them. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. He had to lay hands on them. Oh, right. oh God. Because they didn't have a relationship yeah. with him. Yeah. Right. But see, you gotta understand when you mature, yeah. he yeah. just yeah. called you. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. oh God. Oh God. The mature people, he called. The immature people, he got to touch. Oh God, you just missed it. So you want Jesus to come touch you. Oh God, you got to feel something. I got to feel like coming to church. I got to feel like praising it. No, he just called my name. He said, just lift up the hand. I got to feel like it. He said, just come in. I got to feel like it. So you be immature. This is all for the mature people right here. Oh, wow. Because you'll never see the mature blessing mm -hmm. with immature attitude. Let's go. 
your friends yeah. uh, getting ready for the transition. I need you to know, although, therefore, yeah, but yeah, there's a proposition to get you ready or prepared for the transition. Uh -huh. Oh God. Jesus. Are you prepared for the transition? Oh God. I got to ask you right now. The fourth thing, oh, is to see, are you prepared for trick off or take off? Are you prepared for the transition? Come on, sir. Oh God. I, I done lost some of you right now. I done lost some of you right now. Because you have to be prepared. Somebody said prepared. For the transition. Jesus. My God. Uh, Glory to God. I done lost you because you Glory to God. have Mm -hmm. To do uh, uh -huh. the preparation. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So there's some decisions uh -huh. that I have to make yes, while I'm on the ground. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh God. Oh God. Oh God. I just, I just, yeah, yeah. While I'm on the ground, yeah. I got to make some decisions. Uh -huh. To be prepared yes. to shift. Uh -huh. We're always talking about shifting, Anthony. Uh -huh. But see, are you prepared for the shift? Uh -huh. Oh, God. Because we're always talking about next level, uh -huh. but we're still doing underneath stuff. Uh -huh. uh, we talk about different seasons, uh, but we're still doing stuff 20 years ago. Uh -huh. How could I be prepared for a shift uh, and I'm still doing the same old thing? Uh, oh, God. I feel like preaching that right there. Amen's getting real short. Because now we have stopped talking about what God gonna do. And start talking about what y'all got to do. I'm gonna prove it to you in a moment. I'm gonna prove it to you in a moment. And then I promise you, pray see if I need y'all to sing me a good song before offering time. Because what I'm gonna tell them is gonna mess up their giving mood. So when you're preparing for takeoff, uh -huh. I'm not a pilot, but I don't wrote on enough planes to understand mm -hmm. that when you're flying, the plane is very heavy. Uh -huh. So the plane has to get up to a certain speed in order so the wind up under it mm -hmm. can get up under it what they call lift. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and normally the plane flies in the opposite direction in which the wind is blowing. Okay. Oh God, oh God, oh God. So now I'm fighting opposition mm -hmm. and what don't supposed to go, it lifts because number one, I gotta be going the right speed. Right. Oh God. Right. Oh God. That's right. Oh God. Yeah, that makes sense to you. I have to be going faster mm -hmm. than what I was because if I don't travel at the speed that I need to find, I would never lift up off the ground. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Some of you want to take your time. Uh -oh. oh God. And oh. some of you want to just just lie gag around. Oh God. But God said I need you to come now. I need you to come now. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. And then if you looking back, you can never go forward in the in the speed that you need to go because God is telling you to come now. Oh God. Oh God. Let me let me give you the text because Lazarus, watch this, Kim. Lazarus was in the tomb. He buried. If you read, if you read, if you read in its entirety, you you will understand they buried him around his kin folks. Oh God. Oh God. And then you gotta understand there was kindred spirits in there, brother Hannah. There was kindred spirits in there that because Lazarus was around for me things. Uh -huh. All love was dead and all love was some kin. Oh, oh, God. God. oh, oh God. God. So now Lazarus had to make a decision. Uh -huh. Am I going to stay comfortable around my family or am I going to come when Jesus called my name? Uh -huh. oh, God. See, some of us in here we done got too comfortable around things that's just like us. But God has said come. He's telling us to get from around what you used to. Oh God. Right there, because 
said, I'm going to fly. I got to light my load. Oh, God. 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 He said, teach this last three minutes. Okay. <laughs> Lift. <laughs> I done made the necessary provisions. I understand. My plane may not look like everybody else's plane. That's right. But if God is calling me to it, I know He's equipped me to do what He's called me to. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. So I'm not going by the opinions of others, I'm just going by the call. That's right. Okay. Watch this, watch this. I know a lot of us in here have went through horrific things. I understand that some of us in here have went through some trauma and still trying to normalize your situation. Some stuff you can't normalize. Can't normalize it. I don't understand how everybody died in my family. I, can't, I don't understand why my mama gave me up to the sister. I don't understand why my son and my daughter died. Has anybody in here besides me had to bury a child? Y'all know how I feel. I didn't have to bury a child. And at that particular time, I questioned God. God, why? Zachariah. Don't understand it. Work it together to the good. Listen, listen to me, go. He didn't say everything was gonna be good. Right. That's it. Come on now. That's right. He didn't say everything was gonna feel good. But he said he's gonna make it work for my good. So, in the process of time, he said if you keep walking with me. It's going to be just like gumbo. I'm just going to throw all of it in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mix it up. Right. Because if you just put water in the pot by itself, yeah. it ain't working with nothing. Right. 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 My God. Some of you quit in the process of baking your cake. Mm -hmm. You quit at the flour. And you quit at the eggs. And God said, I'm not through yet. I still got some more breaking to do. I still got some more ingredients to add. But once I add all the ingredients, now I got to put you in some fire. Because although you have all the ingredients, you still ain't ready yet. So I got to put you in the oven and I got to leave you for some time. And I got to make sure nobody don't take you out just because it's hot in there. My God. Wow. Jesus. But I understand that it's real hot, Sylvia. And I understand it's uncomfortable. But I understand is working for my good. I hear the song. And because I understand that, I know exactly what it's going to take for you to be whole again. Yes, God. I'm closing with this. I'm closing with this. Ooh. Oh, God. Say that you in here, eight, 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 eight. eight. Oh I hear the spirit number eight. Hi, I'm Apostle Tommy Bell. I'm First Lady Tabitha Bell. And this is Touching the World Ministries. Our service times are Sunday morning, 8.30, we have Sunday school. 9.30, we have worship service. At 5 p.m., we have our evening service. On Tuesday nights, we have our Transformation Tuesday at 7 p.m. And on Thursday nights, we have intercessory prayer at 6 p.m. Come join us and be blessed.